Hi all folks, this is Max from HighOnAndroid.com. So I've got the three, the Galaxy S2s on all US carriers. Sprint, Galaxy S2, Epic 4G Touch, T-Mobile, Galaxy S2, uh, the AT&T, Galaxy S2. Um, this one is the most similar, uh, the 4.3 inch. It's the uh, one exactly, almost identical to the International. So I would say this is the original. Uh, let me give you a test or show you how big it is. So this is 4.3 and this is 4.5 inch screen on the T-Mobile and the Epic 4G Touch 2. And as you can see, the T-Mobile version is actually a bit smaller. This LCD size is the same. Uh, I believe that's due to the WiMAX radio um, that's on this one. Oops, let me turn off. There we go. Um, so, these are pretty much nearly identical, except um, the T-Mobile version has a Qualcomm S3 processor, 1.5 GHz dual core, uh, versus these two um, have the Samsung Xynos processor. The reason being, I think it is because the HSPA Plus, um, also the T-Mobile runs on a different frequency. Um, 1700 megahertz versus 1900 megahertz on the AT&T version uh, which is the international standard so those are the differences why the T-Mobile has a uh, different CPU and um, in actual reality uh, without overclocking the the Zynos, Samsung Zynos 1.2 GHz processors, which is on the Sprint and the AT&T, is faster than the dual core 1.5 GHz, even though clock speed is faster on the T-Mobile. So, the big question is, which one is the best? Um, in my honest opinion, I like this international, the AT&T version, the best. Um, the international version is pretty much exactly identical to the AT&T version. The reason being is that uh, 800 by 400, 800 by 480 resolution on all of these phones, um, they look the best, I think, on the smaller 4.3 inch screen. Um, I wish these were actually 1280 by 800, like the new, uh, the Galaxy Nexus is gonna be based on. Um, but I believe these are still a great phones. I mean, I'm not saying that they're bad or anything. And the uh, Galaxy Nexus, it's supposed to have ice cream sandwich, but the hardware specs might actually uh, be better on the, the Zynos processors. Um, so I'm not sure until it comes out, but I'm thinking that, you know, even if Galaxy Nex Nexus comes out, um, these phones running the Zynos processors will still be faster if you put the same ice cream sandwich Android on it. As far as the build quality, which one do I like the best? The design for it. Um, I like, as you can see, the AT&T has a slightly metal bezel and this Epic 4G Touch is all black. Um, but the T-Mobile has a metallic finish this one I actually, I actually like the most because it's kind of, it, I like it. And the backs are nearly identical. Um, the Sprint one has a little bit more matte finish. And the AT&T is um, very similar to the uh, Epic 4G Touch. Um, so they're all great phones and I think they are the best phones um, for all those carriers right now. Uh, as far as network connect connectivity, I would say AT&T wins by far um, because I get HSDPA everywhere, even in my basement. As you can see, I'm dropped to edge on my T-Mobile here in my basement uh, bedroom. And also my 4G has been disconnected on my Sprint. Um, so I would have to say AT&T has the best uh, network and uh, for 4G, but their 4G isn't the fastest. Their 4G, I've gotten speeds up to like maybe three megabits per second download. Whereas on T-Mobile, I can get, I got like almost 10, 15 megabits per second download. Um, the reason being is that 
This one is HSPA plus rated for 14 up to 14.4 megabits per second download in theory, but you only get maybe three, four, five. Uh, whereas the T-Mobile one is HSPA rated for 41.4 megabits per second download. Uh, and I'm getting good, you know, 10 megabits per second download when I have really good 4G signals. The only bad part about T-Mobile, they're still the the uh, third carrier third biggest carrier in the u.s so they don't have as many towers so i drop to edge like often you know on any kind of t-mobile phone that's why this one i don't like carrying it to the mall um the sprint epic 4g touch even though i don't get great 4g signals everywhere uh, where I do get 4G signal, I can get easily 15 megabits per second download. Um, this is real 4G versus HSPA is really three, it's like fake 4G, marketed as real 4G. Um, AT&T is already building real 4G, 4G LTE. They even admitted that their HSPA isn't really 4G. Um, the good thing about the Samsung Epic Touch on Sprint is that even if you drop down to 3G, you never, I've never dropped down to like 1X, um, EDV or 1X or the uh, Edge network. So even with 3G, I get good 1 to 3 megabits per second download, which is comparable to the 4G technology on the AT&T. Um, so I've outlined some of the features about all these different carriers. Overall, you're gonna have um, great experience on any of these phones. Um, I would just stay away from T-Mobile if you can, because um, you know you just can't drop down to Edge. That's the worst part about um, T-Mobile. I'm not sure you, you you could be in. You know, I'm here in San Francisco, and it happens to me. Um, maybe you get full, you know, 4G signals everywhere. Then you know you can get for um, T-Mobile, I guess. As for the back of the phone, it's uh, the Epic 4G Touch and the T-Mobile have nearly identical cameras, um, even the position. As you can see, the speakers are on the left, while the AT&T version has it on the right. Um, other than that, the volume buttons are in the same places. Oh, yep, it does. And the power buttons in the same places, in the same side. Um, so here it is, and here's the three phones. Now here's another thing to think about is uh, if you go travel internationally and you want to put your SIM card to use it, let's say in India or something, um, wherever, um, the AT&T version is the only one you can do because it has a SIM card support for international 1900 megahertz. Um, so you, you'll, you will get 3G and data, whereas the T-Mobile, you'll be able to use your SIM card probably, oh, actually, you know what, you can't use it uh, other than on T-Mobile because they're on 1700 megahertz. They're the only carrier in the world that's on that network. Uh, whereas the Sprint one, you don't have a SIM card, but you can get roaming cap capabilities, which I probably wouldn't recommend using anyways. Um, it's probably better to use the local country SIM card because it'll be much cheaper. And I believe AT&T and both uh, Sprint, they will roam uh, around the country. Whereas T-Mobile, they won't roam and you can't even pay to get roaming. Um, but then again, if, if uh, let me say it again, that you know if you're going to go international often, then definitely get the AT&T, swap out the SIM card and you can use it everywhere. Um, if you if your corporation is paying for your Sprint phone, fine, just roam on your Sprint phone uh, um, elsewhere. But it's not really practical for people, um, individuals. So, so which one do I like the best? Um, I really like the Samsung Epic 4G Touch, but I think the I wish they would actually just have put this one in the Sprint Epic 4G Touch because 4.3 inches is just perfect size. Um, this one gets, you know, a little bit bigger and it doesn't even feel bigger, but I think for resolution, it's 4.3 inches, just perfect for the resolution. If this was 1200 by 8, uh, 1280 by 800, then it would be very, very nice, which is the Galaxy Prime coming on, um, Oh, sorry, Nexus Prime or the Galaxy Nexus coming to uh, Verizon. 
Um, which isn't that much better other than, you know, the ice cream sandwich. I think the specs are actually worse than the uh, Epic 4G Touch and the AT&T, which runs Samsung Zynos processor. Um, Samsung Zynos processor is so much better, in my opinion, um, and based on benchmarking. But you, you never know. We'll have to wait and see to get those phones. Anyway, that was just my thoughts on uh, the different networks and also the same Galaxy S2s on the three networks. If you have any questions, um, is there, if there's anything you want me to review, uh, maybe test between you know, AT&T versus Samsung, don't forget to leave in the comments and uh, I'll have a video next about it. Um, in the meanwhile, um, these are all great phones. I, I would get them on you know whatever network you're on. But if your contract runs out, I would definitely switch to a network um, that suits you better, like I told you. Um, so thanks, y'all, and subscribe.